Welcome to Tai Chi, the way to radiant health. My name is Jeff Cote, and I am the Occidental Taoist. In this show, we're going to practice some Tai Chi and Qigong and other Taoist internal and meditative practices. These practices enjoy a long history throughout all of China, and I've had the great opportunity to study with some wonderful teachers, and I want to share that with you. In this episode, we're going to do a brief review of the warm-ups that we've done so far. That's the counter swing series of Qigong, as well as the opening the upper gates. Then we're going to go further on and learn opening the lower gates, and this will complete the basic warm-up. Um, now, I want to say a little bit of something about what is Tai Chi versus what is Qigong in terms of the structure of what we're doing. I've talked about it a little bit in a bigger picture of what Tai Chi and Qigong are, but these are Tai Chi Qigongs that we're doing. These are Qigongs designed specifically to enhance your Tai Chi. They're an important part of the formless dragon system of Tai Chi, and they really should be uh, performed on a regular basis before one even begins to work with the Tai Chi form that we're going to learn. The reason for this is it, the practice itself readies the body for the exact form we're going to be doing. But as we go further along and we start to add even more of these Tai Chi Qigongs and the formless dragon Qigongs into your knowledge base, you're going to discover how each Qigong series teaches some functional elements that later gets translated into the specific way that we do the form. Um, this will enhance your understanding and your advancement. If you really truly want to learn this form well and perform it well, then I highly recommend you do not skip over doing these warm-ups. Even in later episodes when we begin to just work with the form because it is so intensive, it is recommended that you perform the warm-ups on your own. So when we begin working with the expanding and sinking, we want to remember to keep the center line upright and relaxed. The body expanding and returning to center. Making sure we get the movement right before we start with our true bouncing expansion. This is an opportunity where we can begin to drop the tensions of the day. Let our bodies relax, get into the activity, and begin to apply our functional principles, learning to be calm and relaxed, centered and grounded, whole and complete, and alive and lively. Pay attention to your breath, pay attention to your body and its mechanics and movements. Let your mind let go of everything else and come into the present moment fully. From here, we're going to move into counter swing with that lifting and dropping, allowing it to turn the upper torso. I just want to remind you to keep your hips relatively square. While you allow the momentum of the arms to rotate the upper torso. Now there are many variations we can learn to begin to apply to all of these. But for now, we're going to focus on keeping the body in a natural, relaxed movement. Just getting familiar with the flow of forces first before we begin to add any adaptations. We move into the forward and back column swing. Here the power is derived from the legs. You're trying to take the momentum of the bounce, direct it into the arms swinging forward and up, and then the momentum released back down. Each of these warm-up exercises teaches many things, but all of these swinging ones teach us about how to feel the flow of force itself and momentum and utilize a light touch 
to maintain action. Learning to become effortlessly efficient. From the forward and back column swing, we move into our counter column swing. Where one goes front, one goes back. And we allow the momentum of the arms to turn the waist. Feel the movement through your shoulders. Let your shoulders relax. Let this momentum help you release the shoulder into the movement. So the movement itself is almost like water flowing over rock and eroding it. Just eroding the hardness in your body. Let the rhythmic movement itself help you become more mentally relaxed. Bring it to the center. Shake it out for a moment. That's all the counter swing series of the warm up. The next part is opening the upper gates, which we did in the last episode. So we begin with bringing the hands up, rotating the hands, wrists, and fingers in and out. But today we're going to do about eight repetitions. And we're going to go the other way. And that's a pretty good number to work with in your own practice. And we add in the elbows. Remember, we're still trying to maintain our, our, maintain our centralized, relaxed, natural posture. And reverse direction again. into the shoulders, we start, fingertips come together, shoulder blades down, inhale the hands up, relax them out and down. Remember to try to make the fingertips gently touch, but keep a smooth, contiguous motion. This really works at extending your awareness all the way to the fingertips, activating the nervous system for better awareness and control. And we pause and reverse, coming back. One time we come with the fingertips together. Next time we press the palms forward, fingers towards each other as though we're running our hands down a silk curtain. Fingertips together, palms. And we pause here, open the shoulders, shoulder blades down, Palms open, lift the chest, open the back, alternating. And relax and shake out the arms. Next is a trunk twist from the center. Bring our awareness down to the waist and we turn from the center. We're going to let the hands lightly impact the body, starting at the hips. As you can see, one hand in front, one hand in back. The action here is not driven by my shoulders. It's driven by my waist. And the hands pat the hip and low back. And I move up the side a little bit, moving up into the organ cavity on each side. This subtle vibration is really good for the internal organs. 
releasing tension and stagnation. We continue to move up onto the shoulder. And towards the center line, just below the collarbone. Patting on the thymus, if you remember correctly. If you think of something that makes you smile while doing that, you get extra stimulation to the thymus. And down the center line, back to the lower dantian, or the lower abdomen. And relaxed. Next is the waist rotations. This is where we're circling that waist, circling the daimai. Now the meridian of the daimai is connected to all the vertical channels of the body. When we circulate it well and keep it open, it can do its job of regulating the channels and all the, all the other meridians. So we begin with our awareness to the front as we press our hip forward, move it around the side and back, and back around to the front. In the last episode, we described this process very thoroughly. And each time, you'll see me talk about it a little differently, maybe provide a little bit more information. We go the other way, giving you new perspectives and awareness, ideally. And then we bring our awareness from our waist down to our hips, getting those hip rotations. If you remember correctly, I had you widen your feet a little bit, so we'll do that again. Remember, we're paying attention to the ball and socket joint rotation. We're really trying to feel the whole thing, but particularly these inguinal muscles coming in, because when they're tight, they pull that ball and socket joint really tight, so we want to loosen those. So as we move around in the hips, we're really keeping the hips level with one another and the feet really anchored to the ground. The legs are active. You see, I never collapse the leg because that won't allow me to stretch. I want to keep it open and alive. Then we go the other way. Shake out your legs. So that was opening the upper gates. That was the second section that we worked on in the last episode. Now that we've completed opening the upper gates and the counter swing series, we're going to begin learning opening the lower gates. This is the second half of the opening the gates instruction. So we begin with padding, and we're going to start with padding on the low back and waist. You can start in the back and the uh, Ming Men area, which is the low back right around L2, and in the Dan Tian area in the front. Just patting lightly, and then moving to one, you know, back and forth to the sides, and then down one leg, patting the leg. We're just activating chi and blood here, increasing circulation. And we come back up, and we come over to the other side. I always finish right at the hips because the hips are an area where the chi tends to stagnate the most. Next, we're going to do circling the ankle and hip. The key to this particular exercise is in your balance. It is both a loosening exercise for the hip and ankle, but it is also a balance exercise and a balance training exercise. One of the keys for having good balance is to understand that good balance is based upon stacking things well. You know, if you have a pile of dishes, if they're stacked properly, what they're really doing is falling into one another. We want to do the same thing with our bones. We want to stack our bones in such a way that our weight falls into the next uh, bone down, and then that falls all the way into the foot. Now, to understand the structure that we're going to work with with this, we have to understand the basic sort of geometry of the body. I've talked about the the foot having a, a triangular basic shape in the load-bearing portion of the foot, which goes across the ball of the foot, 
to the heel and forms a little triangle. Okay. So that's the first component. But if you look at that and then how the weight comes into that, it comes down through the ankle into that structure, into the structure of the foot, almost like a pyramid, or at least a three-sided one. I'm not sure what that uh, geometric shape is or is called. But we want our weight to move straight down through the ankle and then spread into that triangle evenly as we move into one leg. Then we're going to pick up the other leg and just place it so the ball of the foot is down. Now, if I lock my knee, it's going to generally force me to lock my hip, and any adaptation I need to make to my balance will have to happen up here, which is further away from my base of balance. That's not a very good idea, so we want to unlock the knee, unlock the hip, and keep it soft and buoyant. This is a very good policy to have in all your Tai Chi practice and Qigong practice, is to keep the knees and hips unlocked and soft. The other foot has no weight. I should be able to pick it up and put it down freely, even though the ball of the foot is on the ground. Next, all I'm going to do is treat my legs sort of like a jump rope. I'm going to rotate my knee in a circle, keeping the ball of the foot on the ground. As you can see, this articulates the ankle naturally. If you try to rotate your ankle, what's going to happen is you're going to be using your muscles to rotate uh, and the tendons around the ankle to rotate it and they're going to be tense and they're not going to allow good rotation. So we don't focus on the ankle, we focus on the knee and it's circling in space. Since the leg is unweighted, that hip has the weight of the leg itself just pulling down on the ball and socket joint and rotating it around. That's very good for the hip joint as well as the ankle. Then we go the other way with the circling. and we shake out the leg. Place the foot down, feel the triangle of the foot. Now you'll notice I take my time with all of this and I, I get very specific about making sure the triangle of the foot is down, then shifting my weight over and feeling the knee and hip receive weight and stay soft. That focus, that methodical taking your time, making sure each piece is in line, is the way we retrain our nervous system to consider these elements always. This will enhance your balance in general. Then we pick the other foot up, place the ball of the foot down, make sure there's no weight on it, make sure we're soft and buoyant in the leg, and we begin to rotate this knee. And then we go the other way. And again, making sure my ankle is let go. I'm not trying to do anything with the ankle. All I'm trying to do is lightly maintain contact with the floor, with the ball of the foot, unweight the leg, and just circle the knee through space. And give that a little shake. And in fact, oftentimes I'll go back and forth just shaking the leg. This helps to release any remaining holding from holding your weight in one leg or tension. Moves the lymph a little bit, shakes out the nervous system, and lets you Remember to relax your legs and hips. And we'll return back to the center, bring our feet close together. Next, we're gonna circle the knees. Before we circle the knees, we're gonna do a little friction rubbing to make sure they're warm. This isn't particularly important in the winter. You know, the joints being cold, it stiffens them up. Synovial fluid is sort of a semi-gelatinous kind of uh, fluid, certainly thicker than than water, and the colder it is, the thicker and more calcified it can be, so we want to keep them warm before we move them. Then we're going to keep the feet flat on the ground, and that is a very important point. A lot of times when I see people first learn to do this, they'll turn their knees to the side so far that their feet begin to rock up a little bit. And we don't want that to happen. That's not good for your knees. We want to keep our feet firmly on the ground and just make small circles. You can see there's a little bending and rising. Now, this is very good for the meniscus. The meniscus itself is living tissue, so by activating everything, perhaps we are encouraging it to repair. And the other way. But we're also smoothing it out just through the smooth action here. Notice I'm not taking too deep a bend 
or working very hard. And from finishing circling the knees, now we're going to do deep bends. And this is another one again. You want to listen to your body. Be aware of your center line and your upright energy. Keep yourself as upright as you can be while sinking through your legs. Keep your heels on the floor. Sometimes I'll see people do this. They'll bend the knees, then bend at the ball of the foot and pick the heels up. And that is not what we want to be doing. We want the weight to move back a little bit more onto the quadriceps rather than being at the knees. So we sink down and look up slightly and then come back up. Again, heels stay down and then come back up. And then shake them out. Again, we just do about eight. That's a nice, good warm-up. And I just shake my legs out. Now we begin to work with the real balance challenging. The circling the hip and ankle is the beginning stage. <clears throat> Next, we're going to do ankle rotations. So we again, we're going to adopt the same posture we had when we were circling the hip and ankle, except this time, we're going to pick the foot up all the way. Now, ideally, in order to learn to strengthen the iliopsoas and the hip flexor, the rest of the hip flexors, we want to pick the leg up and ideally parallel to the ground. Not everybody's going to be able to manage that. And don't start with that if you can't. Just use that as a goal. So once it's up, we're going to rotate the foot and ankle, just making circles. Now we are using all the muscles and tendons. And I also, at this point, will use my foot in the same way I did my hand. I'll curl the toes, grasp the shoe with my foot and then reverse direction. And then shake it out. And I put the foot down. Again, triangle of the foot, shift the weight, get receptive in the leg, pick up the other foot, and ankle rotations. Forget to use your foot too, kind of grasping with the toes, exercising the muscles of the foot. And then give it a little shake. And again, between any of these, it's okay to give your foot a little shake, go back and forth. Sometimes when you first start doing these things, your legs aren't used to it, a little lactic acid can build up. Shake it out in between. Next exercise, a part of this series, it's called brushing the grass. <coughs> brushing the grass is a, a movement where we're going to keep our foot parallel to the ground, but just above it, as though you're the sole of your foot, we're rubbing the grass. And we're going to do three different circles. We're going to do a small circle out to the front side, a small circle to the back side. And then we're going to do a circle that encompasses both of those while sinking and rising on the other leg, on the support leg. Now that is usually the challenge for folks, and it is vitally important anytime you're rising and falling through a leg or pressing up and sinking down, that you keep your alignment square in the center of the triangle of the foot. If you allow your weight to move forward into the ball of the foot or further, you'll both destabilize your balance and put undue tension on your knee and the patellar tendon. We want to keep the weight back so it stays on the meat of the leg where it belongs. So we start, we pick up the foot, and we just make small circles. So what I'm going to do is just brush out and brush back. And I want to keep that heel down. I'm going to extend myself a little bit through my foot. Remember I talked about the alive and lively feeling where everything's active, nothing is flaccid. It's not tense, though, either. We're going to try to get that in our foot and our leg so that as we brush, it's almost like we are trying to feel grass that we're brushing. And I usually do four or five one direction, and then four or five the other direction. Then I transition right to the back. Now in the back, this is vitally important here, uh, to keep the heel down when we come back. 
when you extend, a lot of times people will be tempted to lift the heel and point the toe at the ground as they're making the circle. But that doesn't exercise the whole body in the same way we're trying to. If you keep your heel down, you'll feel your glutes exercise a little bit. You'll extend your force through your leg and you'll be working the body in the way I want you to. And we want to for this form. Then the other direction, going back the other way. Then comes the one that goes around both. Now, again, <coughs> we're trying to get our body to go straight up and down and fold in the leg. You're going to find you probably can't fold very far for most people. That's okay. This is not a competition. We're not trying to force ourselves to something. We're trying to discover our limits and gently push at them. So we come down, around, and up. And if you need to put your foot down between each one, that's okay too. But if you can, see if you can keep that smooth and contiguous. And then we go the other way. And shake out the leg. Place the foot down, shift the weight over, soft and receptive. We begin brushing the grass with the other leg. And then the other way. And then back. Heel down. Extend the leg with the heel down. And then the other direction. And big circles, sinking and rising. And shake up the legs. Take a deep breath in. Bring the hands towards the center line. Exhale and release tension. One more time. That was opening the lower gates. As you can see, it's shorter. There's not as much different articulations that we play with, but that's because at this level, the first thing we have to develop is stability, balance, and a little bit of endurance in the legs. Over time, we're gonna add to this and start working the lower body even more with a little bit more strength, a little bit more endurance. At the same time, we have to progress at the beginning and from the beginning. From here, after this episode, we're gonna to begin to work on functional basic principles of Tai Chi in action. Thank you for joining me. Shusha, thank you for joining me on the path to radiant health, long life, and a peaceful, happy heart. Mm -hmm.